Good morning, everybody. It's Ty Warner with Kisssoft USA. Uh, today, I want to talk about this one. Um, reverse engineering the gear set a little bit. Sometimes, um, as a design engineer, uh, for gearing at least, somebody will walk by and say, here, I got this gear. Can you tell me everything about it? And of course, they don't have a print, and they don't have, the, uh, of course, the initial design information. So... Um, you have to do a little bit of investigating. And one of the easy ways that you can get a good idea of what you have um, and get some approximate information is you take a couple measurements, right? Get the, the tip diameter of the gear, count the number of teeth, get the face width. Um, you might have a handy-dandy little uh, pitch tool that shows you, you know, that you can try and match the tooth dimensions up with. Um, in this case, I have a I have a gear out of a automotive application. It's got 23 teeth, and um, I'm I'm trying to get an idea of what the gear set. It's a 2383 gear pair, and <clears throat> I don't have maybe the equipment to measure the center distance like I want, but I can measure the OD, the tip diameter, count the number of teeth, and I can actually measure the helix angle to within a, a degree or so. So what I did, and what you can do on some of these, if you're doing a reverse engineer on a part in hand to get an idea, uh, it takes a little bit of iteration, but you can do it. So I would normally start uh, in the single gear module right here, and I would try and define as much as I could about that gear as possible. And what I'm trying to do is get the profile shift coefficient close to zero um, because I don't, I don't know exactly until maybe I get a CMM to, to measure bores and that kind of thing, what my gear set looks like. So in this case, I'm trying, I'm doing some investigative engineering. So what I do know, though, is I have 23 teeth, and I have a face width of 21 millimeters. I, I know that um, I have a tip diameter of 1.159 inches. So what I'm doing here, and I know and I measured the, the helix angle at um, 16 degrees, okay? So I'm going to start at a pitch, a normal module of 1. It's a small tooth. I, I think it's around a 1. I mean, you'll have an idea. And now I'm going to go to my profile shift coefficient, and I'm going to try and convert this. And what I know out of this information is I know what the tip circle is, and that is 1.159 inches. Now, if you have millimeters, you can change this, of course. But then I calculate this. I see a profile shift coefficient of 1.7559. My idea here is to try and get this down to zero. Okay? So I cancel here. I can accept it. But 1.759 is a ginormous profile shift coefficient. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, maybe it's, I'm going to just go up here to 1.1. And I'm going to do the same thing. 1.159. I'm going to calculate that. But well, my profile shift is down at 0.4177, and that's that's much better. Um, that's reasonable. Um, I don't know if that's right. I'm not even sure if this pressure angle 20 degrees is right, but I'm making a guess that's right. Um, if I go to 1.2 and I run this again, and again what I'm doing is I'm iterating here. I know what my tip diameter is, and I calculate this. Hmm, now I'm bouncing over to minus 0.6974. So I think 1.2 is too big and 1.1 is too small. My idea would be zero. So I'm going to take and I'm going to change this to 1.15. I'm going to go back here, 1.159, and I'm going to calculate this, 0.1641. Um, okay, that's better. It's close to zero. I'd like it as close to zero as possible, something I can live with. Um, I think I need to go back the other way, so um, I need to make that a little bit smaller. So maybe I make this 1.12, and I come in here, 1.159. I calculate that, 0.1788, even closer. Maybe I try 1.3. I calculate this again, 
0.0625. And I would have to probably go to like a 1.135, which um, it, it's, it can be likely that, that they did some tip modifications or they uh, did a, a cutter that was their own. Uh, in this case, I'm still just using a reference cutter, Profile A, okay? I'm not doing anything special with it. Um, but right now I feel pretty comfortable that 1.13 is my actual module. Um, I don't think that in this particular gear set there was a real need to have a ginormous profile shift coefficient. And maybe I'll save this as my um, you know, reverse engineered gear. Okay. And I hit save. Now, the reason this is important is um, I have a, another gear, an 83 tooth gear, and that mates with this gear. And right now what I've done basically is I've defined what this module and helix angle is and the and, uh, profile shift, 0 0.0625. Okay. We can maybe get to zero, but then we're going to be at like 1.135, 1.13 something. And I think that's probably beyond where we need to go. So now I come to my gear pair. And I go ahead and I put 1.13. Um, it's a right-hand helix. We said 16 degrees. Gear 1 is 23. Gear 2 I know is 83. The face, the face width on gear 1 is... Uh, I'm going to say 21 and 21 from what we already measured. This profile shift is 0 0.0625. We back calculated it. Now we're going to size the center distance 62.3739. Okay. And we don't know what the speeds are, the power are, but we, we say well, we'll run this at 5,000 RPM from gear one. And um, I don't know, maybe we're putting in 40 newton, 50 newton meters. We want, <coughs> excuse me, 2,000 hours. Okay. We don't. We can guess at the application factor, but at this point, um, I go ahead and I size that, and this is my root safety. 1.2. My flank safety 0.9, and one. So. That's one way of reverse engineering. Take a few measurements, get an idea of what you have, and then make some, make some, um, what we're going to say is we're going to make some educated assumptions on this. We don't know what the material is, but uh, we don't know what the oil is exactly, but we can make a guess. So this is one way of reverse engineering a gear pair that I've used. Uh, we normally start with one get the information, get the module, then we look at the other. And if you can see here, we could even um, try and size this if we wanted to and even get a better idea of what this is as far as like the profile shift coefficients. But we're just going to use what we had, what we measure, what we think it is, and go ahead and do it. And this is, this is a way to do it without having expensive CMM equipment. And uh, the program is able to get you a real good idea of how what you might have or how close you can get to it. So it's a matter of iterating and getting close. Um, and if you're trying to replace something, once you have this information, you can go in and do an, an even better job of uh, setting up the next design for that replacement. So this has been reverse engineering a gear set uh, with minimal information to get you close. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and email me at ty.warner at kissoft.com. Or you can go to our webpage, kissoft, www.kissoft.com, and we can try and help you uh, with your questions. And uh, happy gear designing. Thanks for watching.